<sighs> okay, everybody, I have been wanting, like, promised this week that I would do a video about our fallen dark night. Because yesterday I did a vlog about our beloved green and white ranger. And now we're on to the man who actually defined Batman, Kevin Conroy. Because, um, yeah, excuse those people around outside doing construction work outside. Anyway, so last, sorry, and also sorry for that too. But last week, you know, last week a lot of us who have been fans of the DC Universe, Batman, Kevin Conroy, who was the voice of Batman throughout almost anything for my generation of the character from Batman the Animated Series to the Batman Arkham games and the DCAU with Batman Beyond, Justice League, and Justice League Unlimited, and a couple of handful of direct-to-video animated films about the character had passed away age 66 of a short battle of cancer. I don't know how he got the cancer. It's anyone's guess, but it was a very short battle. Six, you know, 66 years of life, uh, that's a long road, even though it's very commonplace for any uh, any persons over the age of 60 or 65, mainly 65 and over. It's hard to live long past that point because I, I know there are some people who can live past 60 and still make it to about 70 or 80, and then that's it. And some are grateful to live to be at least 100, although Betty White was close to being 100 herself. And I know Michael Douglas's father, Kirk, legendary actor Kirk Douglas, lived to be at least 101 or something. But Kevin Conroy, you know, the thing is, Kevin Conroy was a very well-defined, definitive Batman voice wise and he was the batman that defined my childhood as a 90s kid like jason david frank of power rangers kevin conroy was the batman and he is going to be sorely missed and i'll i, I mean i will always you know he may be gone physically but i will always hear his voice whenever i pop in a batman arkham game or the entire series of Batman the Anime Series, or Justice League, or when Batman and Superman uh, teamed up in that uh, thing to, you know, um, kickstart Superman's animated series 25 years ago, even though, and I'm worried that, you know, speaking of Superman, since we lost the DCAU uh, Batman of Kevin Conroy, it will be devastating when we hear that Tim Daly, who was the voice of Superman, in Superman, the anime series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and so forth, uh, would pass on too. Because we don't want to lose another Superman actor like we've already lost Christopher Reeve in 2004. Even a good thing Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill are still alive and well, and so is Tom Welling from The Smallville Show and Tyler Hoechlin from Superman and Lois. But, you know, Batman. It's Now, he is the second well-known Batman actor we had lost in the last five years. Adam West passed away in 2017, who was, you know, West being the Batman of the 1966, uh, well-beloved incarnation of Batman, you know, that campy, cheesy, Biff Blam Kapow Batman, and also had appeared uh, as the voice of the Great Ghost in that one iconic episode of Batman, the animated series, Beware the Great Ghost. It was great having two legendary Bat Greats in the same room together with Conroy as Bruce Wayne and Batman and then at, uh, Adam West doing the, the, the hero that defined Conroy's Batman to become the hero that he wanted to be, um, which was nice because, again, Beware the Great Ghost is, in fact, one of my all-time favorite episodes of Batman the Animated Series. It's up there with a whole bunch of them because Batman the Animated Series has stood out to the test of time for a long time. I have loved the show since I was a little boy um, in the 90s, and I still love the show now, even though I don't have the series currently as of as of this recording on DVD or Blu-ray, but you can stream Batman the Animated Series on HBO Max. But I kind of do wish that um, with YouTube and the companies running, you know, that have these shows and movies start uh, uploading full episodes of TV shows now, I kind of wish that um, Warner Brothers or whatever should start uploading full-length episodes of their DC content. Although Cartoon Network did slowly start uh, uploading full-length episodes of their shows, like Teen Titans, for example. 
Uh, I was wondering one day if we'll ever have full length episodes of Batman the Animated Series to be up onto YouTube that you can watch for free. Because if for those who can't afford HBO Max and watch Batman the Animated Series or Justice League, Justice League Unlimited on there, or Batman Beyond. You know, Kevin Conroy and looking at his filmography, you know, how much he has done a lot for the DC Universe and how much he has done for my our generation, for us 90s kids and beyond, and for anyone older than me that grew up on Batman the Animated Series since they were like 8 or 9 or 12 back in when the show started in 92, 93, 94, um, and then it concluded in 95, and then it came back in some form as the new Batman Adventures following the debut of Superman in that universe that they established since BTAS, and... Um, you know, it, you know, I, I, I still, of all of the versions of the DC Universe, I will always cherish the DC Animated Universe. Yeah, Bruce Timm's animation, Paul Dini with his stuff and what he's done, what they all, was well, mainly for what Paul Dini had done for Batman the Animated Series 2, but even though it was really more Bruce Timm and Boyd Kirkland and all of them guys and what they've done for the show... Um, and what made mainly, well, especially with Bruce Timm and what they've all, what he has done for that whole animated universe uh, that defined my childhood throughout the 90s and the 2000s with those shows from Batman the Animated Series until Justice League Unlimited. And I will always cherish that universe and I will always love those those definitive uh, takes. Sure, we may have the DC AMU. I still like the DC AMU for a couple of films and stuff they've done with those versions of those characters like, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and whoever, Constantine, John Constantine, etc. in the DC AMU. And also, well, even though the Arrowverse take or leave it, even though in the live action side of things of DC with Arrow and the Flash and Superman and Lois, but but specifically with Batman, I know that Kevin Conroy has always been doing more voice work as Batman. But the thing is, I I never did got to see Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, where he actually did appear as a live action Bruce Wayne for Crisis in the Arrowverse. I know there was a lot of uh, divisive complaints about how Conroy's Bruce Wayne was portrayed on Crisis on Infinite Earths, but I, I, I can't say other way. Even though, yeah, Conroy had done, like, you know, before Batman, and, and even during his time as the voice of Batman, he had uh, done Broadway, he had done you know, theater, he has done a few live action stuff, but a lot of the time it's just, you know, animation and voice work seems to take up most of his time but again he was dedicated to it he was very dedicated to his uh talent of doing mainly batman yeah he's done a handful of some other characters not batman in some pieces of dc media from what i recall in his filmography you know conroy has has done batman more times than any other actor who have played him in live action voice acting uh in animation or video games and while michael Ke while michael keaton may will always be my live action Batman since I am a fan of Tim Burton and Tim Burton's Batman duology even though I will see Michael Keaton in the Flash movie coming out but Conroy will always be Batman the Batman yeah Michael Keaton was great Christian Bale was great uh, I know people don't rag on me about why I don't like Ben Affleck I have not seen Robert Pattinson in in the Batman. I know my 2022 is just like I'm a terrible Batman fan for not seeing the, Matt Reeves the Batman with Robert Pattinson. And sure, we've had Val Kilmer and George Clooney in the Joel Schumacher Batman films, but even though those guys in the live, you know, Batman of the movies, you know, again, but of the following three Batman, we only had Michael Keaton for two Batman outings. He will be Batman again in. The Flash, Christian Bale finally did his Batman trilogy, even though I love the Dark Knight trilogy, even though the Dark Knight Rises is still personally, in my opinion, my personal favorite of the Dark Knight trilogy, even though everybody says the Dark Knight is the best, and Batman Begins was a great, solid, rebooted outing for the Dark Knight. Ben Affleck as Batman is alright, but I am just not a big fan of, you know, Affleck as uh, Batman. And Robert Pattinson, you know, of all the flack I've given him as an actor, besides Twilight, but Robert Pattinson has done some good things, has done some good roles in some movies. Even I recall Pattinson doing um, that role of what's-his-name in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, but I digress. Conroy, of all of the actors that have done Batman over the decades since the character's inception, 
by Bob Kane. Yeah, if you also count the 1940s serials um, played by two different actors, but then, of course, Adam West in the 60s show, Michael Keaton in Tim, Tim Burton's Batman 89 and Batman Returns, Christian Bale in the, uh, Christopher Nolan's universally acclaimed Dark Knight trilogy, uh, Ben Affleck and Zack Snyder's Snyderverse in the DCEU, particularly in Batman v Superman, the Snyder Cut of Justice League. And then Robert Pattinson as Batman Bruce Wayne in Matt Reeves' recent 2022 outing. But of all of those guys, Kevin Conroy has done Batman way more times than any other actor that has played him in live action television, animated television, live action movies, animated movies, and video games. Because Conroy, as I would say, yeah, I, I hate to say this and knock off Michael Keaton or Christian Bale or whoever, but Conroy is a Batman legend. And I mean, if you go on his filmography on IMDb or Wikipedia or anywhere, you'll see how many times this man has done Batman since Batman the Animated Series 30 years ago, until his death, sadly, as of 2022. And now, personally, when when it came to meeting celebrity icons at conventions, like I said about, like, uh, you know, Jason David Frank of, when it comes to Power Rangers, but for me as a DC, Marvel, Marvel DC fan, Batman fan, um, I wish that before Kevin Conroy passed, I wish... I could have got to meet Kevin Conroy, much like any other icon, pop culture icon, like I said about like like Stanley of Marvel. Throughout my first decade of adult life, I never got to meet the you know people like Kevin Conroy personally, and it's just you know I feel like a really bad Batman fan for not meeting the man who defined my childhood love for Batman, and like. I, I, I feel guilty now. I mean, I, it's one of the few regrets as I'm 30 years old myself, like not meeting Jason David Frank of, you know, with Power Rangers, but Conroy was my Batman. Even though Keaton and Bale are my Batman, are my favorite, top tier, second and third tier Batmans all, also, but Ke Conroy, I feel, is number one for me. Even though, Con you know, Michael Keaton will always be my favorite live action Batman. Christian Bale being my second favorite live action for the movies. Adam West, well, it makes sense. Adam West will always be Batman for those who grew up on the 60s show. My my father, my parents grew up on the 1960s Batman uh, with Adam West. And uh, I know I'm bringing up Adam West and Kevin Conroy in the same video because they both were, you know, seeing two Batman le voice, you know, Batman legends in, in the same episode on BTS with the Great Ghost episode. But... Um, I know I never got to do a video about Adam West um, when he passed away five years ago in 2017. And, uh, you know, I, I do have this regret of not meeting him. Um, but I know a few of my friends who have gone to conventions and met the guy. I don't know if I ever follow Kevin Con followed Kevin on any social media if he's on any. If he was on any, like, Instagram or Twitter. But... Yeah, man, it's just, it's unfortunate that um, he he passed away last week. And, you know, cancer is, you know, cancer sucks. And, you know, I lost a family member of, of a cancer, you know, and I said the story about that years ago and uh, about my backstory. But, uh, and, you know, whenever I hear celebrities that I follow, like even celebrities you haven't heard from in a long time, and you hear, oh, they died of like uh, lung cancer. And also, yeah, stay off the smokes, people. You know, smoking causes cancer and it's mainly lung cancer. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you got, you know, uh, all kinds of cancers that can kill people. Respiratory uh, illnesses, respiratory cancers and stuff like that, like leukemia. And it, it really sucks. Now, what type of can unspecified cancer did Conroy suffer from before he shortly passed? I remember last week when I woke up to check my social media, I saw a po I saw some posts of people mourning for Kevin Conroy. And I was like, no, and I was like, there's no way Kevin Conroy is gone. It was bad enough we already lost Aaron Carter uh, a week or two before Conroy, because I remember Aaron Carter too. Conroy, 
his his death shocked a lot of us Batman fans, um, and as well as DC fans, pop culture fans, you know, cartoon voice actor fandom uh, community. And it's just sad. I was in shock. I was crying. And I wish I did this video wearing a Batman. I do have a Batman T-shirt in my co in my closet, but it, I'm just too lazy to get it out. But maybe the next time I do a video talking about something Batman related or further thoughts on Kevin Conroy and I'll go over what he has done for the character a little bit more, and also talk about some of my favorite Batman Con Con Bat Conroy memories or whatever. You know, I, I wish I wore that Batman shirt that's still in my closet to honor his memory. And I will probably do the same whenever. Michael Keaton or George Clooney or Val Kilmer and Christian Bale pass away and even Ben Affleck to, to a degree when any of those guys pass away but even I was very devastated when Michael Keaton does too but um and Val Kilmer um so it's just like um in all in my 30 years of life growing up on Batman before something like X-Men Power Rangers and Spider-Man and all that in the 90s Batman was my first superhero and a, a hero I looked up to, even though he was a make-believe character, like like any other fictional character. And I, 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 you know, what I did liked about Batman and what how Conroy described it about how compared to all the other superheroes, like you know, you know, you know, Batman was a unique kind of hero who didn't need superpowers to solve problems. He was just an ordinary guy like you and us, you know, and me. And. Uh, so, yeah, and even though I've always related to Batman on, a, you know, not just Conroy's depiction or any of the live action actors who've done him in, in depiction, but when Bob Kane created Batman in 1939, Batman was going to be totally a polar opposite of heroes like Superman and whoever would come after Batman uh, after when they came out back in the 1940s, late 30s, early 40s. Um, and stuff like that in DC Comics and when comic books were just starting out in the 1930s and 40s. And of all the DC heroes, Batman... And one of the reasons why I related to Batman for a long time regarding mainly the entire DC Universe is that Batman... I'm glad he was one of the many hero superheroes in all of pop culture to never have superpowers because Batman can use his intellect, his intelligence to solve his, solve problems and save you know save Gotham from all kinds of terrorism and crime that goes on in that city. And you know how Gotham City is as a uh, town fictionally in the DC universe and especially in the world of Batman. And why I've also related to Batman on a very deep personal level as opposed to Superman or Spider-Man when it comes to these comic book superhero characters. And, and just like I said about what Jason David Frank with me and my why I related to Power Rangers, but with me with Batman, you know, on this video discussing Conroy with Batman, it's like... And same go for all the versions of Batman that have came and, came and went and the actors who have played them... Um, in live action and television and animation and is because I really like how he doesn't use superpowers he has his gadgets like his grapple the Batmobile and several other things to, to solve you know you know to save the world and even Batman is up there with something someone like you know James Bond you know and, you know, in a way, because I've made some parallels with James Bond, Batman and James Bond in a handful of ways. And um, because I'll probably do a comparison video vlog probably later um, if I have the time. And but but still, you know, Conroy, Conroy, I would say, even though I never got to meet him personally, but he was a very righteous, down to earth um voice actor and he was a very kind loving voice actor um and especially when it came to you know for those who would come up to him in batman shirts or whatever and you know that was great um at least he didn't have to deal with i don't think typecasting when he was alive because i know when actors play a certain role it's hard to imagine them in anything else same go for voice actors when they play the same voice role for uh decades and I, I, I am going to regret ever getting to meet Conroy, uh, not meeting Conroy before he passed away. It's just, uh, 
it's very devastating as as I just uh, I'm just a loss of words still. I'm grieving for both Kevin Conroy and Jason David Frank still and two of those icons of my childhood in one month week and a half from each other. It's just surreal. It's no worse than when we lost Stan Lee and even the vo- and also the creator of SpongeBob Steven Hillenburg in 2018 at the same time. It feels like Part of 2022 for me is starting to feel like 2018 all over again. Like, we lost Stan Lee one week and then the creator of SpongeBob the next week. You know? That's that feeling. And, uh, and like, and also what I said before the video, if, you know, with Conroy gone, yeah, there have been a few other voice actors that have done, ba- that, that have worked on Batman the Animated Series that we also lost too. Um, like the voice of Alfred from BTAS, who was also the voice of Dr. Octopus from the 90s Spider-Man animated series. Coincidentally, the same voice actor uh, who did, uh, you know, um, what's his name, who played um, Ephraim, I know his name, who played, who did the voice of Alfred in Bat- Batman the animated series and then also would be the same voice of Dr. Octopus, uh, Dr. Otto Octavius, Dr. Octopus, Doc Ock in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon also. And even he's gone. And I think the voice actor behind Commissioner Gordon from the 90s Batman anime series, he also passed away, I think. Uh, yeah, because, you know, uh, and I'm going to be devastated speaking of voice actors that were a part of Batman, the vo- uh, animated series. And I said, now with Conroy gone, I will be severely devastated when the voice actors behind Harley Quinn and the Joker uh, pass away. You know, Mark Hamill and Arlene Sorkin, even Arlene Sorkin. Uh, she retired from voice acting after Batman Arkham's Arkham Asylum came out. Um, and Tara Strong would take up the reign and the legacy that Sor- Sorkin uh, had set for Harley. You know, Tara Strong did a great Harley Quinn. But I, I feel like like sometimes I see Tara Strong as Batgirl or sometimes as Harley Quinn. But it seems like, yeah, but Strong can knock, the, knock out the ballpark with Harley's voice. And also at the same time with Barbara, Batgirl. Um, even though there was a, a vo- two voice actresses for Batgirl in Batman the Animated Series, uh, I had no idea Melissa Gilbert did the voice of of um, Barbara, aka Batgirl in Batman the Animated Series. But then Ma- the late Mary Kay Bergman uh, voiced Batgirl Barbara Gordon in the Batman and Mr. Free Sub Zero movie, which I still have on DVD, which I previously also had on VHS as a kid. But I'm worried that if we lose any more voice actors from BTAS, and especially like with Mark Hamill, the Joker from Batman, the animated series, and the rest, if you know, I will be devastated. If we lose Batman, we'll probably lose the Joker too. Because my biggest fear, one day if Mark Hamill was to pass away, I know the internet and the whole world will be bawling and be blowing up the internet about Mark Hamill. Because Mark Hamill was also an icon too for both, not just Batman, but also previously Luke Skywalker with Star Wars. You know, when Mark Hamill passes away one day, a lot of Batman and Star Wars fans will be paying lots and lots of tributes. I know I will too, because... um, I like Mark Hamill as the Joker. He was my definitive Joker. Nothing against Jack Nicholson or Heath Ledger, but Mark Hamill is and always will be the Joker for me. And even though Jack Nicholson was good in uh, Tim Burton's Batman, um, and you know as much as I never really give gave a flying s word about uh, Heath Ledger. Uh, and his Joker and why his Joker was so why so seriously phenomenal. Hamill will always be my Joker, much like Conroy will always be my Batman. And even though there were times I, I I tried to do a good Kevin Conroy Batman impression, his voice it, it resonates to me a lot. And now you know the man may be gone physically, like I said, but his legacy of bat of him being Batman. And animation and video games will still live on forever. I hope you guys, um, I hope you guys leave down your memories of his Batman in the comments. I want to see what you guys feel, because man, um, two '90s childhood icons in one day. I mean, one week. Sorry, uh, gone. So rest in peace, you, Kevin Conroy. You will always be vengeance. You will always be the knight, and more importantly. You will always be Batman. That's it, everybody.